Today I'm going to show you 5 ways that you can ruin a logo design. In doing so, helping you not make the same mistakes. Welcome back to Satori Graphics everyone, home of graphic design content. If you're new here and you enjoy my content, subscribe for my 5 weekly graphic design uploads and if you have done already, turn on those notifications so you never miss an upload. Also, leave a like and a comment on your way out. The first thing that can really destroy a logo design is it not being a vector. A logo design must be a vector because that would ensure the quality is going to stay constant if it's scaled up or down to any size. A vector-based program such as Adobe Illustrator should be used when designing a logo. The opposite of a vector would be a raster image, such as a design made in Photoshop. This really will not suffice when designing a logo. You can imagine a logo being put on a small business card or something as large as a billboard. The second point that can really ruin a logo design is kerning. Kerning refers to the space between each individual letter in the logo type. Obviously, if you do not kern your logo type properly, it can lead to some interesting and unwanted results, as you're seeing here. However, the results don't have to be this drastic to ruin your logo. If the kerning is simply visually unappealing, it can come across as something not very desirable. When you embark on a logo design project, your clients will give you a brief of what they want and how they want the logo to represent their business. If you start to stray away from the brief, the logo will not be as the client wanted, and more importantly, it's not going to be relevant to their business. Sometimes, designers can get carried away with what they think looks best, and maybe they even design it towards their own liking or style. That's not what brand and logo designing is about. It's about being relevant to the brief and the business. The next point that can ruin a logo design is partly a personal opinion or personal preference. But choosing the typeface for the logo type is crucial. Every single font or typeface has a specific style and thus connotations to what it represents. You need to match the logo and the typeface accordingly to the brief and the overall feeling of the brand or the company. So when you're choosing your typeface, play around with different font choices and make sure you keep in style with the brand and the business of your logo design. On the subject of typefaces, having too many fonts or typefaces can really destroy a logo design. If you see these examples here, you can see why. Things become unorganized, cluttered, and they don't have a specific style that someone who's looking at the logo or brand will relate to. Keep things minimal and on point to the brand and the brief. Subscribe for my five weekly graphic design uploads, and until next time, design a future today. Peace.